Okay, so here we have it, the lesser spotted Desmo Sudici. Now, obviously Desmo is short for Desmodromic and Sudici is simply 16 in Italian. So it's 16 valve Desmodromic. Because at the time, obviously Ducati only produced V-twins. This was the first venture into V4s that Ducati ever did. And I have always just thought this was a phenomenal, phenomenal machine. When Ducati built this, they really went out on a limb and they were one of the first people to actually put out sort of a MotoGP style in a hyper bike, we'll call it. You know, there, there are super bikes and this was, this was like the first hyper bike. Since then, we've seen the RCV213 come along and, and various other bits and bobs, which were sort of big ticket super, super bikes or hyper bikes, as I've just decided to call them. This was the first one. And actually, they were really good value because these things came absolutely loaded with equipment like the gasolines and all the billet parts and the stuff. And, and, you know, you even got sort of carbon ceramic on the back there and they did this special 16 inch rear wheel and, and all these little details that, that made it quite a phenomenal machine. And these produced about 200 brake horsepower, at just under 14,000 revs. And, and so they, they, they were definitely not shy of power. And at the, at the time that was pretty massive. And these days we're quite used to seeing 200 brake horsepower with BMWs and things now out the crate but it was big power and it was really special. And it literally was a, a MotoGP bike with lights on. And I've always thought they were terrifically undervalued. And um, obviously recently we've just seen that the, they're really starting to gather pace now financially. Uh, I've sold a couple of Desmos in recent times, including this one. And, and I only tend to have them in stock for a day or two um, before, they're, before they're sold. So they're really, really hot right now. And, and I think there's still terrific investment potential in Des Mercedes's. Uh, incredibly special bike. Obviously they made 1500 of these plain red ones and then they went on and made another 1500 of the, what they called the team version with the white stripe. Personally I like the plain red but it, you know it's all, it's all much of a muchness. But yeah what a, what a great machine. Very very special. Came with the noisy exhaust and the standard exhaust and the paddock stand and the bits and the plaque and then it was a very very special bike. And, and still now undervalued, I think. People are paying 90,000 for a Super Leggera, which is a production-based V4 with some stickers and some wings on it. Um, this, this was a GP bike. This was something completely different that was out of the range. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ducati lost money on these because they were so special and, and so unique. And they didn't really share any components with any of the road bikes. And so this was a kind of a real sort of race department one-off special and um, remain now one of the most collectible and one of the most interesting and significant bikes in sort of recent Ducati history for my money. Now, unfortunately at the moment the weather's really poor, the roads are covered in salt and it's freezing cold so I can't take this out and ride it and put the camera on like I normally do, uh, which is a real shame. But I have ridden two or three Desmos in the past and they are an incredible machine and in just so exciting. They really do make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. The chassis feels very, very stiff. As you accelerate normally, there's plenty of power, so it lifts the front wheel, but it just feels really tight, really in control, really stiff. And, and the noise and the revs, you know, this revs up to sort of 14,000. And the noise is coming out of the top here, so it's loud in your helmet. And there's it a huge amount of sensation and exhilaration when you're on board one of these things. The sad fact is now that probably most of them won't get ridden much because everybody's sort of mileage sensitive. But if you can afford to sort of hang the expense, what an amazing machine to actually go out and enjoy. They are super, super cool and really a lot of fun to ride. And they just make the most exotic noise that you've ever heard. I'll fire this one up and try and let you hear it a little bit. But they sound like nothing else. They sound much better than the new V4s, if you ask me. They're very sharp, very responsive. I think it helps with the exhaust being on the top here because the noise is very much in your face. But what a machine. What a machine to own. I, you know, I have to be honest, if, if I had the money in the bank personally, I think this one would be coming home with me. Um, it's a, it's a, because it's such a beautiful example. But this is going to one of our regular clients and I thought I'd just share it on the channel before it went. But what an amazing machine, what a lovely thing to have. 
And, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, currently in the market, a low mileage good bike is maybe 65,000, 70,000. Uh, I would imagine even within the next year or two, we'll see them peak at 100,000 because they deserve it. They deserve it. They're a special machine and they deserve to make the money um, and uh, be because they're so unique. And I don't think we'll ever see a bike like this come out of Ducati again because they're already now kind of productionized the V4 and stuff. So this will remain unique in the history of Ducati. And uh, yeah, just, just what, a, what an awesome thing. Um, so let's just fire it up. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the noise on the microphone with, uh, without too much distortion. <laughs> get 10% of the sensation that I get that, that made the hair stand up on the back of my neck just running it on the stand. Very, very special bike. And uh, I'll, I'll do a few close-ups around the bike, let you see some of the sort of billet details and things. Um, unique feet as well, carbon fiber, monocoque rear end, um, bits and bobs like that, you know, very, very much based on the GP bikes of the time. And uh, yeah, just sensational. Okay, so we've got this lovely, big, deep GP style swinging arm off the back here. Really, really nice. The, the unique 16 inch rear wheel that they fitted to this with the um, special one-off Bridgeton tire. These uh, billet aluminium hangers down here, obviously carbon fiber and bits, lovely billet toe pieces and stuff and nicely machined pegs and, you know, just lovely, lovely little details when you look inside. And, um, the gas olins down the front here, which were unique to these at the time. I don't think anything else in this sort of period had got these special forks in and things. Um, obviously, all, all the bodywork's carbon. Uh, you've got your number plaque on the top there and all the carbon in the front and things. The Brembo mass cylinder, the foldy levers, all the bits and bobs like that. This was quite a unique piece on the rear here where the exit of the exhaust is. This is a special sort of heat-proof carbon ceramic. It's very much sort of a GP F1 style type material. Uh, I don't think that's ever been featured on another bike either. And so just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, super pleased to have it here. This, this particular example is, is unmarked UK pristine machine and uh, abs absolutely exquisite.